A site map is a hierarchical diagram of a website or application. It shows how pages are prioritized, linked, and labeled. You can think of a site map as the bird's eye view of the website. We're going to be looking at how we can create a site map using Adobe Photoshop. Inside of Photoshop, I'm going to be setting up a 8.5 by 11 letter size document and I'll display it in landscape orientation. I'll go ahead and click Create to start a new document. What we'll be building here is a site map for a fictional site that we're going to be working on. To begin working on the site map, I'm going to be using my rectangular shape tool to create the rectangles that are going to indicate every page on my website. Once you have the rectangle tool selected, you can come up to the option bar at the top of Photoshop and you can change the fill color, stroke color, and stroke width, along with other parameters like manually setting the width and the height, and even setting the roundness for the corner of the element. I'm just going to reduce the stroke width a little bit, and once I've done that, I will come to my document and I'm just going to drag out a rectangular shape that is going to indicate a page on my website. Once I have this, I'm going to use my type tool and I'm going to type the name of this page. So this first one is going to be my home page. When you do this, you're going to want to make sure that the text is going to be large or small enough to fit within the rectangle. You'll also need to think ahead for situations where the text may be perhaps two words or longer bits of text. So you can reduce the font size right up here. Now that I have my font and my rectangle, I'm going to select both shapes by using the move tool and click, hold and dragging across both items. Then I'll come to the option bar and I'll go ahead and align the horizontal centers and the vertical centers. And as you can see, the text is now centered in the middle of this particular rectangular shape. Now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'm going to hold down my option key or alt key and you can click hold and drag to create a copy. Now currently I only got a copy of the rectangular shape. I'm going to do undo and with my move tool selected I'm going to click hold and drag across both items and in my layer panel I'll make sure that both the text and the rectangle layers are selected. Now when I hold down the Option or Alt key and click, hold, and drag, you can see that I've made a copy of not only the rectangle, but the text as well. We're going to place this particular collection of shapes over here on the left. And then I'm going to get my text tool and I'll double click and we can change the name of the text. It is worth noting that when I first started creating my text, my text is center aligned. This is helpful because once the text and the rectangle are already aligned to the center, when you create new text, it will automatically stay centered. This would not be the case if your text was left or right aligned. So that can save you a little bit of time. Next, I'm going to select both of these items, hold down my Option or Alt key, and I'll just drag out another copy. I'll switch to my text tool and I'm going to double click and I'll go ahead and write out the next bit of text. I'm going to repeat that process so that I can create all of the top tier pages for my website. It is possible for you to just go ahead and create all of the buttons in one go, or you can create them one by one. You'll need to switch back to the move tool and then grab the text tool so that you can fill in the next box within your site map. Now I'm going to grab all of these with the move tool and I'm just going to move them over to the left a little bit more and we need to create one more top tier navigational element and as you can see my elements are not fitting within the document. I have a couple of choices here. I can select all of the items and scale them down and if you select everything and hold down your shift key and click hold and drag you will constrain the scaling so that everything is going to scale together, which can be really helpful. The other option would be to increase the size of the document. I'm going to choose just to simply scale these down because mine are pretty big anyways. Now that I've done that, I'm going to use my text tool and I'm going to go ahead and fill out this last element for my site. 
I'll switch back to the Move tool, and I'm going to select both of these items, hold down Option or Alt, and pull out a copy. Now these items are going to be sub-tier navigational elements within my website. Once I've made a copy of this element, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull these over to the right. This will help me to create an organized flow when I actually draw in the lines, which we'll be doing shortly. I'm going to create one additional copy, and then I'll switch back to my text tool and just fill in the appropriate text. Now, as you can see, I didn't quite get the copy of this last element. The reason why is because when I held down the Option or Alt key and created a copy, I released the modifier keys, and I'm holding down Option or Alt and Shift to constrain the position of the element at the same time. But needless to say, I release the modifier keys before I release the mouse keys. So make sure you release your mouse first and then the modifier keys. If you don't do that, you won't successfully make a copy of those elements. And we'll do this one more time, and this can say careers. Okay, now that I have all of the pages that are gonna be part of my website, I'm just going to kind of clean up the organization. And as you can see, when I move things around in Photoshop, I get these little pink lines. They're really helpful because they are going to indicate when something is aligned with something else. So I'm just going to align the home button so it's centered above the awards page within my sitemap. The next thing to do is to link all of these elements together. I'll do that by using the line tool. So I'm going to get my line tool. I'm gonna to make sure that I have a fill color of gray and I had my rectangle selected, so let's just do undo. And I wanna make sure that I'm clicked away from everything so that I'm not making a change to an element. And now that I have the line tool, I'm gonna to go ahead and I'm going to click, hold, and drag to drag out a line. Now, once I've done that, if I click away from the line, you can see I get a little line. So that's the first line that I want to create. Then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create a horizontal line that's going to span above these. And if you need to reposition these elements at all, just simply select the item with the move tool and you can use your arrow tools on the keypad to nudge them one pixel at a time. I'll switch back to my move tool and sometimes the lines can be a little tricky to select. So you might have more luck by selecting them in the layer panel. And once again, I wanna make a copy of this. Now, because this is so thin, I don't get those little double arrows indicating that I can use my modifier keys to make a copy. So if we just go ahead and create a copy in our layer panel by grabbing this particular line, dragging it to the new layer icon, and it'll create a copy. And then I can just grab this and position it where I want it to be. The other thing that we could do is we could have the line selected and just do a copy paste. I'm using the keyboard shortcut of command C, command V. If you don't wanna make copies of the elements inside of the layer panel, if you zoom in so you're a little bit closer, now when you use the move tool, you'll be able to see those little kind of P back or double arrows and you can make your copies. Now currently my lines are extending into the actual page elements. And I'm not gonna worry about that right now because I'm just gonna use my layer panel to make sure that I put those behind everything else. But I'll do that at the end once I have all my lines in here. So I'm just using my Option or Alt key and creating copies. And then I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna create another copy. And this one is gonna come over to the left of these buttons. And I'm gonna grab this and just click hold and drag to make this line a little bit longer. And then what we'll do is we'll use the line tool again, and I'm just going to draw a horizontal line that goes from locations and careers and hooks up with this. Now that I have that, I'm gonna go into the layer panel and I'm gonna select all of the lines. And with all of the lines selected, I'm just gonna click hold and drag and drag them to the bottom of my layer panel. So that will put them behind everything else within the layer panel. You don't wanna put them behind the background layer, and I don't think you actually can because the background layer is locked, but we wanna put them behind all of the other elements. If I use Command or Control Zero to zoom out, you can now see that I have a really nice looking 
organized site map, which gives a clear indication of how my site is going to be organized. So the home page is going to link to these top tier sub navigational elements, and then contact has its own set of second tier navigational elements. The site map is an important deliverable that you'll want to provide to your clients because it gives you a schematic of how your web page is going to look. Not only does it provide that feedback to other people that are working on the project, it also is a way that you can ensure that the names that you've provided are going to be approved by your client so that when you actually build the site, these will become the navigational names that you're going to use on your site.